Hi guys, welcome back, Matt here. So today I'm gonna to cover my top three lenses of 2021. These are lenses that I discovered in 2021, but may have been released before that date. Spoiler alert, all three lenses are Voigtlander lenses and they're all Leica like MAT lenses. Stay with me till the end of this video and I will announce the winner of the giveaway for January 2022. So make sure to subscribe if you're not yet subscribed for a chance to win in future months. Okay, so before I give you my top three, let me just go through some of the amazing lenses I've tested over the last 15 or so months. In no particular order, I've tested the Voigtlander Nocturne 50mm 1.2, the Voigtlander Nocturne 40mm 1.2, the Voigtlander Ultron 35mm 1.7, the Voigtlander Ultron 35mm f2, the Voigtlander Ultron 28mm f2, the Voigtlander 35 f2 Apo, the Voigtlander 50mm f2 Apo, the Voigtlander 90mm f2.8 Apo Scopar that I did recently, the Voigtlander Nocturne 75mm f1.5, the Voigtlander Nocturne 50mm f1.5 version 2, and lastly, I think, the Voigtlander Helia 50mm 1.5 Classic, which I did really recently. So those are some of the amazing lenses I've tested, and then which of those impressed me enough to actually get the lens at a later date after testing them. The three lenses in no particular order that I actually later then bought were number one, the Voigtlander 35mm f2 Ultron. I actually have this lens here, but I'll maybe bring up some extra footage as well. This lens is absolutely tiny. Uh, for someone that likes small lenses, as soon as I saw this lens, I was like, this is quite a nice lens. And then when I use the lens, I'm like, this is a really nice lens. So to cut to the chase, why did I buy the 35 f2 Ultron of all the 35mm lenses which I could have chosen? And as you know, I've already got quite a few 35mm lenses. So what then made me buy yet another 35mm lens? Number one, it is smaller than the 35 1.7 Ultron and it's slightly sharper. Number two, and in no particular order, number two, it is sharper than a 35 f2 like a Summicron which surprised me, and it's smaller. Number three, it's about half the size of the Voigtlander 35 f2 Apo, and it's not quite as clinical. So because I shoot portraits, I don't necessarily need clinical lenses, but I do often walk around when I'm not doing portraits. And so for that reason, a small 35 mm lens is kind of a perfect lens to keep in your, in your tool bag your toolkit, kind of your photography toolkit to have with you whenever you need a small 35 mm lens, which performs really well optically. So in summary, the reason I bought this is small size, sharp, wide open F2, just brilliant, absolutely no complaints. And I think if you need one small 35 mm lens to have in your, your, your kit bag for, for things, for, for certain jobs, or for a walkabout lens, or if you're a one camera, one lens kind of guy, and you shoot 35 mm this is absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm gonna do a written post on this on mrlucker.com, and for any of the lenses in this test, I'll put a link to mrlucker.com below. Uh, click that and you'll find written reviews with more posts for the lenses that I've covered so far. Number two is, again, this was a really easy decision and didn't think I needed this lens, but I bought it as soon as I saw how good it was. Number two is the Voigtland Ultron 28mm f2 lens. So this is very similar to the 35 f2, but it's slightly bigger, which is why I then bought the 35. So just a little size, side by side size. So to put it in front of my face. The 35 is smaller but the 28 is still a nice compact size. Why did I buy the 28 f2? I've already got the Leica Elmerit 28 f2.8, and that's an amazing lens, and that's slightly smaller than this one. See that video if you, if you want to see more about the Elmerit. I also had the Leica Summicron 28mm f2. When I did a side-by-side -side test between the Leica and the, the new Voigtlander, the Voigtlander beat it wide open and stopped down and everything. For, for for my testing. So it was a no brainer really to sell the much more expensive Leica. Even though I call myself Mr. Leica, I'm happy to use any lens on the Leica cameras as long as it performs well. Sold the Leica and bought the much smaller, much more affordable Ultron, which performs better as, as I say. So that was kind of a no brainer, really easy decision to make. And uh, yeah, really impressed. So if you need a 28 F2, so it's just for me, I do wedding photography. so. If you are shooting 28mm focal length, sometimes you do need an f2 aperture in low light conditions or if you want to get a bit of shallow depth of field. Because this lens also focuses down to 0.5 meters, if I'm using it on things like the Leica CL or the Leica SL, it lets me get a bit closer for kind of those detail shots. So really good lens. And lastly, this one took me a bit longer to decide. 
Voigtlander brought out some amazing fifty mil lenses, and as a portrait photographer, I'm always trying to work out which is the best tool for the job to give me the look that I'm trying to achieve. And every time I tested a Voigtlander lens, I'm like, it's kind of ninety percent there, and it's really good at what it does, but it's not quite the, the exact tool that I need for my particular particular needs. So of all the fifty mil lenses I could have picked, my number three top pick is a seventy five mil. <laughs> None of the 50mm lenses were quite good enough, but I will give an honorary mention in a second. People contact me for one-to-one -one Zoom calls, link below, to understand what lens may be best for them. Uh, sometimes it's lenses, sometimes it's lights, sometimes it's cameras. And if you ask me what was the best portrait lens in 2021 that I tested, I'd say the Voigtlander Nocturne 75mm 1.5. Now to give some perspective, I know a photographer who used the, the Leica Noctilux 75mm 1.25, and he sold that lens to buy this lens. I think he bought this lens, but he, he tested this lens against that lens and he said there wasn't that much difference in terms of, compared to the price difference, the images from this were kind of punching way above its weight. So for me, when I look back at the test images I did in Poland at the end of 2020, I've not managed to do anything else similar in terms of shallow depth of field and kind of really beautiful kind of bokeh type portrait shots with a 50mm lens which makes sense because the 75mm lens is longer so it's going to give you a greater shallow depth of field when both lenses are say 1.5 or even a 1.250 versus a 75 1.5 the 75 is going to win in terms of hopefully more pleasing looking portraits it did take me about a year before I decided maybe eight months and then finally I'm like that is the lens I actually need or, or would like to have so when I'm shooting portraits on a Leica like MAC camera although I do shoot a lot of 50s I think two of the best performers are the 75 1.5 Nocturne and the pre-aspherical Leica Summicron 90mm f2. That's got a really strong character. That's an also a really amazing lens, but it's an older lens. And so you'd have to look for that on eBay. Again, I can put links to eBay below or just go to my kit list on mrleica.com. So yeah, that's my top three. If I did want to give an honorary mention to a 50mm lens, because there have been some amazing 50mm lenses and some people really want a 50mm lens and they're not interested in longer or wider. The lens that almost is perfect for me and I may even have to retest another copy of the same lens to see if I like it the second time around even more is the Voigtlander Nocturne 50mm f1.5 version 2. That lens is similar size to maybe the, the 28 Ultron. It's a small size and it's a similar kind of design, the black and silver banding, if you buy the black and silver banding version. It's small, it's a 1.5 and it gives a really nice rendering and it's got a good contrast. Of the 50mm lenses, the recent-ish release 50mm lenses, the Nocturne is the smallest and if you don't need the 1.2 aperture and maybe the glow look from the 1.2, which is a very nice lens, and you don't need the clinical sharpness of the Apo, which is also great at what it does. And you don't need the imperfections of the Helia Classic, which is designed to give you a certain different look. If you're happy with not, not the most clinical, not the most glow, not the most imperfections, then the Nocturne for me is the best. And it's the smallest. So if I end up getting a fourth lens, that will be my fourth lens for top lenses in 2021 that I uh, discovered. That's just my two P's worth for, for what it's worth for anybody interested. Um, and for anybody wondering, the, the cameras that I use these lenses on, the Leica M240, especially for the 28 Ultron and 35 Ultron, the Leica CL, probably again for those two lenses, but maybe if I want to save for weddings, I could also use the Sen5 1.5, and with the crop factor on the Leica CL, it gives me more reach. And then to the most part, it'll be the Leica SL full frame, and potentially the camera I'm recording on, the uh, Lumix S5, which I sometimes use as a backup, and it's my uh, YouTube camera, uh, obviously full frame mirrorless. Those are the cameras that I use these lenses on, but of course, if you're a Sony shooter, or a Fuji shooter, or Nikon or Canon, or anything else, most camera systems ad can adapt the like M-out lenses to your system via an adapter. So yeah, if you want small, well-made Voigtlander lenses uh, with good optics at great prices, I think these lenses offer great value for money. And if you live in the UK, you can get 5% off if you buy from Robert White, a non-sponsored video. And before we finish, I would like to announce the winner of the January 2022 channel giveaway. Uh, this is the first month of me doing my monthly giveaways. So as I say, if you've not yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe because as I grow the channel, I'll make bigger, bigger prizes or higher value prizes. And so you've got to be in it to win it, as they say. So the winner for January 2022 is Philip Choi. So Philip Choi, if you're listening, please get in touch, um, comment on this video and uh, we'll sort it out. You've won full access to my Patreon for a month. Uh, all access to all videos and all posts 
So that's around 200 and must be maybe 250 posts by now and maybe I think 110 videos. So you get all that for free and you also get a one-to-one -one Zoom call with me if you want it. Just let me know and we'll sort that out as well. And then every month I'm hoping to slightly increase the giveaway value. So next month I'm going to include a preset pack as well of your choice. So make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications. And with that said, I think that's everything. A massive thanks to my patrons. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day and see you in the next one. Bye.